JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 25th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the market. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other major currencies on Thursday during the Asian session Friday. It lost uh, the most ground versus uh, AUD, the Euro and CHF in that order, while the only currency against which the greenback eked out some gains was the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of the Aussie and the weakening of the yen suggests that the financial community continued trading in a risk of fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the strengthening of the Swiss franc points otherwise, thus in an attempt to clear things around uh, the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. That said, the picture is mixed uh, here as well. Major European indices traded uh, mixed within a, uh, within a plus minus 0.50% range, but uh, Wall Street saw all three of its main indices closing in positive, in positive territory. Sentiment deteriorated again during the Asian session today, with Hong Kong's Hang Seng losing the most. As you can see on the graph, it lost 2.74%. Uh, now, yesterday, most of the preliminary PMI indices from the Eurozone in the UK came in better than expected, sliding, sliding by less than forecast, while later in the day, the US once even improved from their uh, February uh, readings. This suggests that the effects of the war in Ukraine to the global, on the global economy are not as severe as initially, estimate, as initially estimated, or they they are yet to, they have yet to appear. Uh, in any case, um, European indices were mixed, uh, suggesting that investors stayed skeptical with regards to adding more risk to their portfolios, and this may have been the case due to the West agreeing to strengthen its uh, forces in Eastern Europe and to tighten sanctions on, uh, on Russia. However, Wall Street participants were not held back and as they decided to take advantage of uh, beaten down shares of chip makers and big growth names. As we already noted, sentiment deteriorated again in Asia. As for our view, it did not change. It remains the same as yesterday, the day before, and the last few days actually. We still observe a pattern where the slides due to negative headlines are smaller than the advances we get when there, is, when there are glimpses of hope. And um, with most indices, especially the US ones, staying above uh, the key resistance obstacles they overcame a few days ago, we still see decent chances for some further uh, advances in the short run. However, we remain reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery, and this is because the war has not uh, stopped yet. We will re-examine that approach when the conflict is over. As for the FX world, we will consider AUD JPY as one of the best pairs to exploit further improvement in market uh, participants' uh, appetite. Aussie has been supported recently by high expectations over, uh, over several rate hikes by the, year, by the RBA this year, the rise in commodity prices, and the latest recovery in equities. On the other hand, the recovery in equities has worked against the yen, which may have been also suffering by the divergence in monetary policy between the Bank of Japan and other major central banks. Now, even if appetite deteriorates, the, monet the monetary policy diverges, as well as the rising commodity prices due to fears of, of supply shortages, uh, may keep any losses in this exchange rate limited. 
Now, as for today's events, during the early European session, we already got the UK retail sales for February, but both the headline and core rates came in below estimates. As for the rest of the day, the calendar appears very light, with a couple of central bank cares uh, holding speeches. Among them are Bank of Canada MPC member Catherine Mann and New York Fed President John Williams. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock uh, a.m. GMT. But as from uh, now, and because time changes during the weekend, uh, I will be holding the webinars every Monday at 7 a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye. Have a great, a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next week. JFT, just fair and direct.